Hi guys, Daniel here from Mako Spear Guns. In this video, we will compare a conventional gun to a roller gun. For comparison purposes, we have two Mako Titan Elite Spear Guns. One is a conventional gun, one is a roller gun. Both guns are 100 centimeters long. Before we get started, it's important to note that all Mako Titan Elite Spear Gun components are completely interchangeable. This means you can convert your conventional gun into a roller gun and you can convert your roller gun into a conventional gun. You don't need a new barrel, you don't need a new handle. It's very simple and the muzzles and the barrel floats are available on our website. So the first thing you will notice is a difference in band configuration. On the conventional gun, the bands go from the muzzle straight down the barrel to the sharpened tabs at the back of the spear. On the roller gun, the bands are affixed to the underside of the barrel and first go around the roller muzzle and then down the barrel to the sharpened tabs at the back of the spear. Now let's compare band drive. Band drive is the distance the band drives the spear and is determined by measuring from the start to pull point to the rear shark fin tab. On this roller gun, it has a band drive of 42 inches. And on the conventional gun, the band drive from the start to pull point to the rear shark fin tab is only 31 inches. In this comparison, the roller gun has 11 more inches of band drive than the conventional gun. This means the roller gun will have considerably more power. And let's look at something else that is equally as important. Let's now compare this 100 centimeter roller gun to a 130 centimeter conventional gun. As you can see, the band drive is approximately the same, but what's important to note here is that although both guns have the same band drive, the roller gun is propelling a 140 centimeter spear and the conventional gun is propelling a 170 centimeter spear, which is much heavier. Another reason this is important to note is because when a spear is fired, initially the back of the spear travels faster than the front of the spear, resulting in the flexing of the spear, which reduces power and accuracy. And the longer the spear, the more it will flex. Additionally, if the spear is made from stainless steel instead of carbon steel, the spear will flex even more, which means even more loss of power and accuracy. So, in this comparison, the 100 roller gun will have the same band drive as a 130 conventional gun, but since the 100 is shooting a shorter spear, the 100 will have more power and more accuracy than the 130 conventional. And because the overall length of the 100 roller gun is much shorter, it will be easier to swing, track, and shoot a moving fish. And for you guys who travel, traveling with a shorter gun is easier and in some cases less expensive. One other advantage of the roller gun is a dramatic reduction in recoil. But to achieve this reduction in recoil, the gun must be properly rigged with what is called full pretension and not partial pretension. Full pretension is where the bands extend the full length of the underside of the barrel and attach near the handle. This is the correct way to rig a roller gun. Partial pretension is where the bands are attached near the middle of the barrel. This is the wrong way to rig a roller gun. A roller gun rigged with proper full pretension will eliminate recoil and maximize the gun's fullest potential. As for any disadvantages of a roller gun, I'd have to say it's when hunting in holes for a small to medium sized fish. At close range, the spear can easily go through your fish and into a rock. However, with a conventional gun, if you have a fish that's holed up, you can remove one band before taking a shot. At such close range, you probably don't need the added power of the second band. But with a roller gun, you can't remove a band, so you're stuck with the increased power that the gun gives you. Also, when hunting in tight spaces, there is a safety factor involved. Before taking a shot with any gun, you must be sure that the spear will not hit a solid object before it clears a band drive. Otherwise, the spear can hit a solid object and propel the gun backwards, resulting in injury. So, in tight spaces, the longer band drive of the roller gun becomes a liability, and a shorter band drive of the conventional gun becomes a benefit because it's not driving the spear as far down the barrel. As for loading, it's a bit faster and easier to load a conventional gun than it is to load a roller gun. To load your conventional gun, you just grab a band, pull back, and then you rest the wishbone on the shark fin tab. However, when loading a roller gun, you can't get your fingers in here to grab the band, so a load assist is needed, and there are two types. You have the hook style load assist and the wishbone load assist. This is the Mako hook style load assist, which is a latex band with a hook, a wishbone, a leash, and a leash plug. It's typically used on longer guns. This is the Mako wishbone load assist, and it's typically used on shorter guns. To load your gun with a wishbone load assist, you simply grab the handle, pull back, and then you can transition to the gun bands, and then simply load as you would a conventional gun. With Mako hook style load assist, you hook the wishbone, pull back, and you temporarily rest 
the load assist wishbone on your shark fin tab. Then you can tuck the leash plug under your band. This way it doesn't pull it away in the loading process. Then you transition to the gun bands. As you do, the load assist comes off and you tuck it in your belt. Here's what it looks like in the water. As you can see, there are advantages and disadvantages to both guns. I hope this video has helped you in deciding which gun is right for you. Well, thanks guys for taking time to view this. For more information on our Mako Titan Elite Spear Guns, as well as our full line of high-performance spearfishing gear, please visit our website at makospearguns.com. Dive safe.